Hello, my name is Ryan Walner, technical advocate here at Portworks, and today we're going to be showing you a demo about cross-cloud application migration from Google Cloud to Microsoft Azure with applications running on Red Hat OpenShift 4.2. What you'll see here is two side-by-side -side OpenShift deployments. On the left, we have Google Cloud and on the right, we have Azure. Um, both are running 4.2, Kubernetes 1.14.6. And if we go into the dashboard of each one, you can see that the cluster details show that this is the GCP provider. And on um, the other cluster, we have the Azure provider. You can see here that we have six nodes, three masters, three workers in GCP, and the same in Azure. And our workloads are running in the demo namespace. This is what we're actually going to migrate. There's a MySQL and Portworx cluster and a web app. They are backed by Portworx. So here you can see Postgres data volume is backing Postgres. And if we look at the PVCs, they're bound here and they are using the Postgres SC. Portworx volume provisioner on the cluster. Now, Portworx is already deployed on both of these clusters, uh, two separate deployments of Portworx. We can go into Cube System here, the, name the system namespace, and look at Portworx. And here you can see some Portworx routes, Portworx API, and the Portworx cluster deploy with the OpenShift operator that we have available to use. Now on the Azure cluster, we can just double check that, that the demo namespace isn't even on this cluster, right? So we're running our primary cluster in, in Google Cloud here and, and nothing is basically deployed to Azure. It's, it's, a, it's a DR site, it's a backup site, whatever you want. And none of the objects or none of the applications that we're concerned about are there yet. It's just kind of a ready to go space. We have two terminals for these two clusters, GCE on the right, Azure on the uh, sorry, Azure on the right, GC on the left. Portworx, as you can see here, the status is both up and running. We're running in US East on Google Cloud and US West in Azure. Now, in a Google Cloud cluster, we can look at the demo namespace again here to see the pods running. We have a replica of three of a web application, KDS counter and none of it exists in Azure. If we access the web application here, uh, we can add some data here, which basically adds little uh, points to the database showing where these icons exist and it's persisted to Postgres, uh, which we showed before running here. Now we also have a MySQL cluster and we'll go ahead and add some data to it just so we can verify that our data is moving with our migration. Here, let's enter MySQL, create a test database called foo, use that database and create a table for, for our pets and insert a row here and list the data that we created. Here we can see we have one record of our data uh, just to make sure so we can verify that same data once we move things over. So now that we've added data to Postgres, we've added data to MySQL, uh, we want to make sure and back up and move things to Azure, right? So how do we do this? The first thing that's needed is a cluster pair. So this basically pairs one cluster to another in a directional fashion. So here we have a remote Azure cluster pair tying our Google Cloud to our Azure Cloud. And the next thing we need is a migration schedule and optionally a, po a policy. First, we'll take a look at the policy. Migration policy here listed is what we'll be using. And this basically talks about when the backup should run. So here we're gonna run them every 15 minutes, uh, monthly on a certain day and weekly on a certain day. So effectively our RPO is, is 15 minutes. 
Next thing we need is a migration schedule, which targets a, a particular cluster pair. In this case, we want to move things to Azure, and we move the demo namespace. And we want to include our volumes, and we tie it to the migration policy. So once you've defined that, we go ahead and create this, just like you create any other Kubernetes object. So you can manage this in GitHub and then deploy it through GitOps and things like that. So once that's created, we can go ahead and list the current migrations in the demo namespace. And here we can see the one that just created. Currently, it's moving the volume. So it's the stages volume, and it's in progress. We can go ahead and watch that to kind of see the progress. On the Azure cluster, we can see demo namespace doesn't exist. But now that the volumes are moved and so are the applications, we see success and our demo namespace shows up. It's 11 seconds old uh, in our Azure cluster. So at this point, we've migrated volumes and metadata. So you can see the demo namespace now appears in our Azure OpenShift UI. Uh, but note that even though we can see the deployments and namespaces and everything that was moved, these are just objects. So no pods are running, meaning our application is not turned on in our Azure Cloud. It's still running in Google Cloud. So here you can see that the active pods are running in Google Cloud still, five running. So now how do we fail over, right? So this is kind of what we want to achieve is either failover or we want to move our data and applications to Azure uh, for various reasons, right? It could be uh, could be disaster, but it could be uh, maintenance and things like that. So what we'll do first is turn off our migrations. So we want to edit our migration schedule just so we're not uh, trying to move applications uh, at the same time as turning them on. So we, we write suspend equals true and we quickly just edit that. That'll turn off the every 15 minutes uh, backup and things like that. The next thing we want to do is scale everything down in our Google Cloud platform. So you can kind of you can script this to make it happen really quick, but I'm doing it by hand. Once you scale down deployments, obviously your deployments will go back to zero. No pods will be running. Things will terminate. And we can verify that here. Things are all terminating. So as this is happening, we can activate our migration in Azure. And we simply do that by using our Stork CTL activate migration, and it'll go up and scale everything back to where it was. So now we can see the pods pending, and they'll quickly become running because we have our data there. We have the metadata from our last backup. Again, this is running from our, our most recent backup. We can see it's not available in Google Cloud anymore, and everything is coming up in Azure. We can double check here by getting the pods. We can see that our web application, MySQL, and Postgres are now running. So now we should be able to access the application with the data that I already had. Great. So here we can see that the data we entered for the application in GCP is now available. And we can interact with the app, adding more data to Postgres. And we can go back into our MySQL application as well. Uh, our MySQL database, that is, and exec into the container. We'll quickly look at the database we created prior and select the pets information. We can see everything's there. So we successfully moved all of our applications, MySQL, Postgres, and the web application from Google Cloud to Azure. And so we can just leave it now running in Azure if we want and spin down our Google Cloud. And that is uh, migrating your applications from Google to Azure with Portworx. I hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching. Until next time.